sharing his personal opinion on Hornbill TV about the creation of a frontier Naga territory for Eastern Naglin, leader of Naga People's Front Legislature Party, Kujo Luzo Nino, said that ENBO fighting the election meant that they were not demanding for a separate state. The side effects of giving them judicial, financial, administrative autonomy is very dangerous and in the long run it would have negative impact and could lead to the disintegration of Nagas. Today they go to autonomous council, tomorrow if they ask for a separate state, who can stop? So if it happens, this will be the greatest partition for the Nagas, he added. This is something the government of India is doing to separate the Nagas. He further added that it would be a direct infringement of Article 371A and could lead to scrapping of the said article and even the Naka political issue could be buried. Uh, this is one question I do not like to take, but since you are asking, yes. I have to be very frank. Uh, it's a personal opinion. Yes. It doesn't represent my party. But partition of Naga or separation of Naga into two, that officially my party is against. And therefore, in last election also, we have given a statement according to that, and PF is not for the partition or dividing the Nagas. That, is, that stands like that. Now, coming to my personal opinion, you see, when the ENPO said that they will not contest election till their problem is solved, Their problem were not solved, but they contested. They contesting the election means they are not fighting for a, a separate state. Be, be, be very clear about that. They are not asking for a separate state. So a separate state will not come about. But the side effects of having an autonomous council, giving them judiciary powers, administrative powers, financial powers, is very dangerous in the long run it will have a lot of negative impacts and this will be just the starting point of the disintegration of the Nagas in the long run because today you are under autonomous council later on you would you would want more autonomy more freedom then slowly you'll be start you'll start asking for union territory which you may be entitled with 20 MLAs. Yes. Later on, it will grow. Population will grow. Then once they come to a sizable amount, they will start asking for a state. But who can stop them? So this will be the greatest partition of the Nagas if it happens. So for me, I feel that this is something which the government of India is doing to separate the Nagas. Now this integration will start, number one. Number two, it is going to be a direct infringement to Article 371A. So if this happens, it may even scrap Article 371A. Number three, we have a Naga political issue at hand, a common cause. That Naga political issue also will be buried. The, frame, the framework agreement will not be relevant anymore. The agreed position will not be relevant anymore if this happens. And moreover, I have the full copy of their demands and also the uh, government of India's proposals. It's quite dangerous. What they have written is financial powers, everything will be done by the governor himself. And if that is approved, approved where does our chief minister stand? He'll be the number two. He will be having a super chief minister above him. And that constitution does not per permit. It is against the ethos of, e of the Indian constitution as well. But I am one thing I'm very happy about is the, the other day the parliamentary minister, Mr. Keji Kenya, had given a press statement. He said that there will be a tripartite talks. So there it has to involve the government of Nagaland. Government of India and ENPO. So without these trees approval, they will not go ahead. So maybe a time will come for all of us to debate in the assembly where members will be taking part. We'll see what happens. We know, no doubt, of course, we want them, we wish them the best. We want to see them shine, but not at the cost of the Nagas.